Was that a black bear or a grizzly bear? That is a common question asked by people when they venture into the great outdoors where bears occur. Hello, I'm General Norman Schwarzkopf. In this video, we'll be showing you how to distinguish between black bears that roam most of the United States and grizzly bears that exist only in a few protected ecosystems in the northwestern United States, Canada, and Alaska. The black bear is the smallest and most widely distributed of the three North American bear species. It's compact and heavily structured with relatively massive legs and feet. Each foot has five recurved claws, about one inch long, that are non-retractable. The head is moderate in size with a rather straight facial profile. The nose is tapered with long nostrils which help the black bear smell food and detect approaching danger. Look at the ears of this bear. They are rounded and stand erect. This physical feature is very noticeable compared to the ears of the grizzly, which are short and stubby looking. Throughout eastern North America, the normal color is black, for which they were named. But in the west, several color variations exist, from black and brown to blonde. The muzzle is brownish, and a white V-shape across the chest or throat area is common. The eyes are small and beady. From a distance, they appear black when shaded by the eyebrows, but they're actually a rich brown. When walking, black bears appear to be shuffling and may look awkward. Grizzly bears once roamed from the west coast of North America clear across the Great Plains and into the Ohio and Kentucky Valleys. Generally, grizzly bears are larger than black bears and can be distinguished by longer, curved claws, humped shoulders, and a face that appears concave. The claws on a grizzly's front feet are about the same length as a man's finger, roughly two and a half to five inches in length. They are considerably longer than those of the black bear and usually show up in footprints left behind. The toes on black bears are in a noticeable arc, while the grizzlies run in an almost straight line. One of the best ways to distinguish black bear prints from grizzly bear prints is to run a straight line from under one outside toe, across and touching the front of the pad, and seeing where it intercepts the opposite outside toe. If the line crosses above the center of the outer toe, the footprint belongs to a black bear. If it crosses the lower half of the outer toe, the footprint was likely made by a grizzly bear. At times, and in various conditions, it is difficult to tell the difference between a young grizzly bear and a black bear. Young grizzly bears have a long and narrow face with little bulk in the neck. Following the front legs up to the back, you can see the prominent hump on the back starting to form. This hump is a buildup of muscle in the forelegs that increases in prominence as they mature and become stronger and accommodates the digging nature of the bear. An adult male grizzly bear will have a head that looks very blocky. Look at how this bear's neck is wider than his head, a clear indication this bear is an adult male. The neck on this female is much smaller in relation to its head. This is a common characteristic of an adult female and young immature grizzly. The ears are smaller, more rounded, and less erect than those of the black bear. Grizzly bears vary from pale yellowish brown to dark brown. The under fur is typically chocolate brown, and the guard hairs generally have white bands and or white silvery tips of various lengths giving the animal a frosted or grizzled appearance that becomes more obvious on darker animals. The long fur and bulky body makes the grizzly bear appear larger than it actually is, leading to grand exaggerations of bears weighing 1,000 to 2,000 pounds. The barren ground grizzly and the interior grizzly of the Rocky Mountains are smaller in size compared to the Alaskan coastal grizzly. Full-grown male Rocky Mountain grizzlies average from 350 pounds to 800 pounds, with a rare old-timer reaching 1,000 pounds. Female and young adult male grizzlies could weigh the same as or less than a large male black bear, so comparing size is not a reliable way to distinguish one bear from the other. With this massive body, the grizzly moves slowly, yet smoothly and gracefully, like a true monarch. The bear has a tireless lope, which allows it to travel long distances with ease. 
When needed, grizzlies are also capable of running at speeds of 30 to 35 miles per hour. While grizzlies have a reputation for being aggressive towards humans, that reputation is not entirely deserved. Grizzly bears most often avoid contact with humans and generally flee or seek cover at the scent or sound of humans. Aggressive actions towards humans are rare and most commonly associated with females protecting their young. Today, grizzly bear populations are secure in exclusive portions of the United States. In the lower 48 states, they were listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act in 1975. The current distribution and population in the continental United States is less than 2% of its original size. Grizzly bears now exist in perhaps five of six ecosystems located in the lower 48 states. These ecosystems include Yellowstone National Park and adjacent areas of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, the Northern Continental Divide in Montana, the Cabinet Yak Ecosystem in Montana and Idaho, the Selkirk Mountain Ecosystem in Idaho and Washington, the Bitterroot Ecosystem of Idaho and Montana, and the Northern Cascades in Washington. In traveling and living throughout all parts of the world, I have learned that we possess in this great country of ours one of the most marvelous arrays of wildlife and wildlands that exist anywhere. It is our responsibility to preserve this heritage so that our children and their children have the opportunity to appreciate and enjoy these national treasures as you and I do today. We could leave them no finer legacy. Just as I was invited to participate, I extend to you the same invitation to help support non-game and watchable wildlife programs in your state. Your contributions do make a difference.